front of us is, of course, the Piper Aerostar, a legendary general aviation aircraft with piston engines that are quite powerful. You know, in this cockpit here with a G1000 panel, we can see a pretty good cabin right here. Nothing to worry about. Now, everybody, once again, this airplane's got plenty of power to be flying you around the world. All right, not around the world. It doesn't have to range to do that. But check this out. This plane just took off very, very nicely. But let me tell you, they had other dreams about the Piper Aerostar as well. In 2011, they showed us this interesting model. Everybody, yes, the Aerostar Jet version. Yes, the designer Ted Smith had the interesting idea of, well, what do we put uh, Pratt & Whitney 615 engines, obviously beautiful jet engines, onto a general aviation aircraft? You know, this was kind of like a competition for the Embraer Phenom Jet. Another small, very fast jet. Let me just take off right here. There's one called Rage Shuff. Speeds of up to 403 knots. Yes, without any flaps or anything, we've, we've just taken off in no time whatsoever. And we are very quick indeed. And I found this idea so interesting. What happens if we just put these tiny general aviation jet engines to planes that are used to propellers? Take a look. We're super fast, 130 knots already. This thing just looks so cool. Whenever I see it on Instagram, I'm always in awe about how this thing looks like a little airliner. Kind of like a shrunken down 757. And yes, it kind of does fly like one. I think that's, uh... That's pretty good. Sadly, this plane never became reality. It just wasn't researched enough. There are other small, you know, personal private jets out there. The Ceres jets or even the Honda jet. We're also these small Phenoms that all have a bit of a bigger cabin as well. And I imagine that the range on this thing wouldn't be too amazing, but I had a bit of an idea. Now that we have a model of the beautiful 615 Pratt & Whitney engine, by the way, this is a freeware from quite two years ago, by Aerosphere, who made this plane here for the flight simulator. We can maybe dream about other GA aircraft that we can just convert. And no, probably a bad idea. But I mean, why don't we start with a single piston airplane? We could maybe use the Cirrus. The problem is those wings are very, very low for hanging some engines there. I mean, the Aerostar had that very problem. I mean, the engines literally hang on the ground very close to water. You don't really want that. But already a plane that we can perfectly use for this is the Cessna 172. That's, prob that's probably a bad idea. I mean, we could maybe do a Cirrus jet style, put a single engine on top of the roof. Kind of like that. Wow, that looks amazing. Trouble is that's not very uh, legal. If you look at what the Yaza wrote and their type certificate for the 615 engine, you'll tell that the engine is only proof for multiple engine installation and not single engine. So uh, now we need to put this thing on the wing. Two things on the wing. Good. Kind of like that. That's very stupid. Yeah, so far, so far, so good. You know, I wanted to make sure that these engines don't interfere with our flap system. But you know, our ailerons. Uh, oh, you know what? This might actually fit. So we go ahead now and um, turn these things into jets that actually work here by copying over the jet engine data here from the Jetstar. Perfect. There we go. I've now done that. Let's go ahead and actually also, of course, get rid of the prop like that. There we go. All right, so welcome aboard our special little Cessna. We can already hear the engine. We can already see the blades spinning. You know, it's nice. We can, there's a lot of engine here inside of that front part of the aircraft that could be now replaced with a storage unit. Yes, you know, you can put a lot of storage inside of this plane because it is really fast. Now we shall test out. Oh, let's go try going full power. I don't even think we need full power. This thing uh, was built for pushing the Aerostar. Jesus Christ. We built the fastest Cessna alive! I'm actually proud of that. As you can see, the ailerons still move perfectly. Oh, wow. We are lit. Well. Yes! We might have died there. Honestly, this is insanely brilliant that I came up with this. Take a look. Yes! Very powerful. You might, you might want to not have this much power. This plane would easily do this with only one engine running. Yeah, in order not to exceed red line speed, you would maybe only have to push like, you know, 50% of power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Now the slice like a Cessna normally could. You would also have to adjust the engine instruments. Obviously, the fuel flow is kind of out of range here, as well as the engine temperature. It's all in the red completely because obviously jet engines got going to be a lot hotter. Look, like if we push pull power, this thing's going to go crazy. Something else you might need to do is turn off the crash, res uh, 
this thing here so we can actually push this thing to the limits yeah i think it's like quicker than an airliner actually that's quite insane let's actually go up to altitude here all right here we go now at forty thousand feet we're at full power this plane is insanely happy take a look here we can now turn on the autopilot right here which is now there it goes put this to ultimate ah we keep blacking out here this is the problem now it's black screen all right, well, let's pretend we have an oxygen tank. We're kind of a scuba diving kit on board. Here we go, this thing. Beautiful, and we're now holding on to it very, very well while we're flying at a speed of 330 knots. Just like that. Everybody, we've turned the Cessna into a super plane. This would actually be somewhat maybe possible. No one would do that, but we could do that. I have another idea, though. We all know the Twin Otter. Love the plane. A plane that could use some improvements, right? I mean, take a look at these very powerful. I think these are also Pratt & Whitney turbo prop engines. This thing could actually kind of work as a jet. I mean, these engines are very high, too. This one is actually more plausible of an idea. I mean, look how nicely they fit compared to the Pratt & Whitney engines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this might look a little bit small, but I don't think there should be an issue at all. Take a look. All right, this one might be quite a little more logical. Take a look. This is actually not half bad. I mean, it used to be a turbine engine before anyway. Take a look at the flaps coming down. All right, that might be a little in the way of... Yeah, that's totally fine. I would quite like to take off now with our jet, which apparently... Okay! Uh, all right, yeah, uh, I've done a slight mistake here. That shouldn't be. That's wrong place. All right, now, I, you know, once again, I think this you know, DHC-6 Twin Otter idea isn't even that bad. It might be the most plausible uh, one. These engines are quite tiny, aren't they? I mean, the Twin Otter, there it goes, a little bit bigger than the Cessna. But I think the, these will be able to provide enough thrust in order to, you know, keep the twin otter in the air and i think they do perfectly just like that that was a very short takeoff just like that look at that the engines are spinning nicely and the airplane is gaining some speed but not too much i think uh, the jet engines will make this airplane just slightly more performanty than the trouble prop but you know we are very quickly in the air yeah this is faster problem is these guys don't support any reverse thrust whatsoever which is a problem a big problem i mean the big strength of the dhc6 twin otter is its reverse thrust that was a good maneuver right there let's go ahead and land now we might not want to be landing it on the shortest runway in the world now that we don't have any reverse thrust whatsoever i mean this is still going to be a stole planer, isn't it like that's not going to be too bad oh that was that oh well, i landed on the nose that's fine there you go, we can stop still with our brakes. We can use the elevator as spoiler, and we stopped quickly nevertheless. This thing will still serve its purpose around the world at sea by airport. And even better, there we go. Taking off is definitely no problem at all for this plane. And I like the sound of it, really. I think jet sounds maybe are a bit more pleasant than the turbo props that the DHC-6 Twin Otter passengers are used to. We can even pull some cool maneuver. Unless you crash, that's kind of, that's not what's supposed to happen. Overall, I like this idea of putting big breath to prop GA airplanes to make them faster. Sadly, this uh, isn't really widely done. This thing was only built once or, once or twice, but I really want to fly it. Take a look at that. <laughs> acceleration that is crazy for a piper so buddy thank you guys so so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members my supporters guns killer r27 james deram that dude anime gods of gaming derek insider plane nishijitsu finer professional jamal ryland williams and new the york you've got beautiful names